Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Adam. Let me just bring it down. We're back in the death tunnel to get the, uh, the water filter for the mushroom cult. I'm gonna go in this side so I can avoid the radiation and see where the truck is that might have the, uh, the water filters on it. I'm gonna assume it's all the way at the back. Because she said the tunnel collapsed on top of it. If I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah, there's a truck back here. Uh, so we're run through the uh, non-irradiated part of the facility, and then we'll come down around here and avoid most of the radiation that way. Go and loot those crates. Then we'll return uh, to the mushroom coat, give them the water filter, uh, see what they want us to do next. I do want to return to Red Fighter and get our last upgrade, I think. Unless there's another uh, tier of upgrades after I get the bedroom upgrade. Uh, off camera, I did go back to Paragon. I bought two more things of gas, which I need to put into my car before I forget. And uh, I did another dog fight. Oh, where are my pills at? There they are. Let's go and use two of those. Yep, that's the water filter. It's another crate over here. Let's see what that's all about. Bunch of ammunition. All right, I'll take it. Let's get out of here. All right. Pretty uneventful, but I figured I'd show it off anyways, and so people can use the video to find the filter in case they couldn't find it. All right, good job, everybody. All right, back to Krasno, which I think is uh, a little southeast from us, Doo -doo. right there. Do the old quick save and onward. Let's swing by Ultranoia real quick, see if the pig guy's there. And let's kill some, kill some sca- eh, I can't talk. Kill some scavengers, there we go. Couldn't get that out of my mouth for some reason. Alright. Ooh, some gasoline. Well yeah, you guys just signed your own death warrant, didn't you? Uh, let's see, he has an SMG, he has some sort of- oh, shotgun. That's not that good. Uh, okay. Take him down. Just in case, I don't want to waste a... another shot on this guy if he's almost dead. Alright, some healing stuff. I'll go ahead and pop that. Take the coffee. Go take off this take the sawed off shotgun. Scorpions are worth a good amount of money, so I'll be taking that as well. Ropes are also worth a good amount. And I'll just put it in the trunk if I can't carry it off. I need to start collecting toadstools as well for the uh, 
apothecary. Alright, sure. There we go. Go ahead to Krasno. <coughs> I'm sorry, actually, we're going into uh, Ultranoia to see if the pig guy's there. I stop by every now and then to see if he's there. I haven't found him yet. Hey, did I ever talk to the girl about his death? Katya, I want to talk to you about Kovalev. The girl nods and wags a finger at you. I already know everything. Huh? What? From where? He told me that he, that he wanted to travel the wasteland, and I agreed. He did so much for us, so now he is free and happy. Somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to tell you. Katya laughs and smiles. Well, I already knew it all. Don't worry. He's going to be okay. He went through so much stuff during his life. Yeah, I should go. Do you have gas? No, you do not. Alright. Let's go see if the merchant has gas here. Nope. I, don't, I still don't see the pig guy, so... So I think he's supposed to be in front of the uh, the bar. All right, well, let's get out of here then. Towards Krasno. Alright, let's see if they have gas. I know I've got to sell my stuff to the guy in uh in Ultra Noye. They have diesel. Still don't know what diesel's used for. They only have 73 rubles, but I can get something for that. Um Sure. Pathetic caravan. Absolutely pathetic. You never see my business again, Mr. Blue Shirt. All right. Let's go turn this quest into the Mushroom Cult, and then I kind of want to go to Red Fighter, get the last upgrade. Uh, we still have that other quest that takes us to the Caravan Sari? Sarai? I don't know where that's at on the map. I'm assuming it's to the southwest. It's not like I've explored too thoroughly down there, but it could also be to the east. <sighs> I just, I don't know. Right, let's talk to... We still haven't been to Fogolefka. We could always go to Fogolefka and get all the quests that are in that town. So that's what we'll do next. I'll, uh, I'll get back to Red Fighter and then we'll go to Fogolefka. Uh, let's see. Well, well, well. How's the search for the water filter going? It's done. I have the filter you need. No way. You found the filter? That's great. Give it to me. Uh, here you are. Give her the filter. Ariadna takes the filter from your hands and examines it carefully. Then with a happy smile, she puts the useful tool in an inconspicuous drawer, drawer on the wall. Wonderful. You can't even imagine how much you've just helped mankind. We start producing these tools, life will get so much easier for everyone. Well, glad to be of service. Ariana strokes her chin and lapses into thought. The next task will be much harder, both from the moral point of view and the skills you'll need to complete it. I'll start from the beginning, as it's a very sensitive issue. You've had enough time to see that mycelium is of no danger to anyone, isn't plotting against anyone, isn't in anyone's way. You do understand that, don't you? I can see it in your eyes, you do. Otherwise, you would have left long ago. No one's keeping you here against your will. 
So yeah, despite our totally non-invasive attitude, we have enemies. Ariadna clenches her fist and turns away slightly to hide the contempt on her face. Cross your arms on your chest in silence. There are enemies of progress, villains and heretics who believe it their sacred duty to put spokes in our wheels where, whenever they have a chance, in every project, every social initiative. We're scientists, not gangsters, so we choose to ignore these pathetic, narrow-minded people. But some of them are hard to ignore. Take Vadim Nikodemich Pavliuk, an important merchant, for example. Every governmental meeting he does his best to upset our plans. He urges to vote for yet another inspection of our society, or to close us down altogether, or to recognize us as a terrorist group. He has a vivid imagination, albeit a bit lopsided, and it makes him very dangerous for us and for ordinary people we're striving to help. Continue listening in silence. He should be made to see reason, to think about his sinning. I'm not talking about killing or mangling him, mind. This is what terrorists and gangsters would do. We just want to send him a message. In his chambers below the Chamber of Commerce, Vadim Nikodemich keeps a pet pig. Apparently he values the pig's life far more than the lives of wastelanders or science. Finish this ridiculous pet and leave a note at the corpse. The rest doesn't depend on us. It depends on Comrade Pavliuk's common sense. Why does he keep a pig as a pet? I don't know, but apparently he's attached to the animal. Still, I think not so much to the place of the pet's life... Wait. Still, I think, not so much to place the pet's life above his own. Okay. Do you have connections in the Chamber of Commerce's bunker? Ariana's eyes flash mischievously. Our mischief is... Mischief, yeah, okay, whatever. We have connections in many places. Okay, if that's... If that needs to be done, I agree. Splendid. Now go to the bunker under the Chamber of Commerce, find the porker, and... Well, you know the rest. Here's the note. Ariadna gives you the note you'll have to place at the corpse of a pig that hasn't done anything to deserve such a terrible end. I see. Okay, I better go then. I just have to go kill a pig? Now, what was that thing? Because I found that thing in his, uh... This thing right here. Potion of Animal Interaction. Applying zoom in. Doesn't work in combat. I wonder if I can use this when I'm in the Chamber of Commerce. Or when I'm down there. Animal interaction. So maybe I can take that when I'm and talk to the pig? See what he thinks of all this? I'm not sure. I've been holding on to that for a while. I just didn't know what it did. Oops. Alright, let's go see what we can do. Okay, um, by the way, what's your name? The man freezes and gives you a long, suspicious look, then he replies without taking his eyes off of, off you. Pavlik Vadin Nik Nikodimovich, uh, why are you asking? Uh, so you're the one I'm looking for. The Secretary General wants to talk to you. Are you serious? Couldn't you have sent someone I know? Anyway, I got you. I'll go and see him immediately. Yes, this is the right thing to do. Alright, so he's leaving. Let's see what I can do. So what does Zoomin do? Oh, I can talk to him. The pig looks upon you with an intelligent, almost human gaze. There's one thing missing in it. The spark that you notice in other people you've talked to in your travels. The creature is void of any emotions. It has no fear, no happiness, no sense of surprise. It wants nothing. The drilling mouth of the pig opens, and you start to hear a voice from the depths of the animal's body. Kill me, human. I beg of you. Do it now. Before the master finds us out, there'll be no other chance. Uh, hold on a sec. Maybe you can answer a few questions first? Oh, how this poor pig is sick of talking. Ask your questions, but after that, release my spirit. Where did our pal Pavle Pavliuk get you? The pig sighs and starts a strange stomping on the metal floor with its front left hoof. He took me in as a young animal, from a bright green happy place. That was the last time these small pig feet touched marvelous mud, and these fat sides rolled in the dirt, while touching the sides of other pigs. So he got you on a farm. Uh, how is it... How is it to live better than most humans nowadays? The pig answers with irony in its oinking voice. Metal doors, the light that never warms. All that is good for the humans. The absence of good, rich, warm mud is good for humans. 
Dry, tasteless feed three times a day is good for humans? Well, fine. Bring people here. I will give them this place gladly. Seems like what's good for people kind of sucks for pigs. Uh, do you miss other pigs? The pig makes a sad howl and hits the floor with its nose. Comrades, my pink oinking kin, so fat, they undulate with every move. Meaty, massive, plump bodies covered by short hair, resting in sweet, warm mud. You shall never leave, shall never leave my heart. On the other hand, Master taught me well. If I meet another pig, its words and views would seem childish and primitive to me. Oh, curse this amazing brain of mine. Bring me the bliss of ignorance that you took away. Quite the existential tragedy here, Porky. Or there. Any good rumors? All I heard in this dark abode are the histories of long-dead politicians. Lenin, Krupskaya, Stalin, Khrushchev, Brezhnev. How many words that a pig does not need to know? Even the rumors my master tells me resolve around these names. Or revolve. Not uh, maybe revolve. Check the city above us. It is true that some con artist is telling people the dead man in his box are the remains of Lenin. Is it true that another man dressed like a jester is ready to die for a statue of Lenin in the market square? Well, thanks for sh sharing, Sir Hamelot. Alright, let's change the topic. Uh, why do you want to die, though? The pig shakes his head as if making a circle around the room. My kin was made to walk on fresh grass, to roll around in precious mud, to sing the song of fertility and eat all day long, without thinking of the hidden truths behind Lenin's letters and then his wife, Nadezhda Kripskaya. I don't live my life like most people, but I don't want to die. Tell, tell of your travels. You tell the pig your story, without names and numbers, of course. Even an animal might betray the secrecy of Adam, after all. As you finish the tale of your exploits in the waste, a semblance of a smile appears on the pig's face. I lived a small life within a life, as I was carried away by your story. Your fate is not like mine, traveling weird lands, changing people's hearts, fighting vicious monsters. A constant bet of all or nothing, and yet you manage to win every time. By your own wits and a trusty weapon to back you up. I like this. How Professor Tolkien say? Life of high adventure. So join me on my quest, it will be fun. You state this in hopes that the disappearance of the pig will create the same effect as killing it would have. The pig, though, sadly shakes its head. May happen another life, my friend. And another body. Mayhap then I shall taste the sweet, sweet air of freedom. And who knows? Perhaps we shall meet to fight evil side by side, back to back, in a desperate struggle for peace, like valiant heroes of the past or brave barbarians of old human lore. Now, though, I have but one escape. Death. I don't want to kill this guy. Fine, I'll butcher you. Stay here. Oh. Alright, where's the note that I gotta leave here? The pig is simply a warning. An enemy of progress will meet such a demise. Please think about it. Your friends. Man. I feel bad for killing that pig. I didn't want to do that. Man. Who would have thought that had been my greatest moral dilemma? I've been slaughtering strangers on the road and scavengers like, like it was nothing. But that pig... The pig made me question all that I was, all that I ever will be. Oh, wait, I need to go talk. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta go this way. I need to go talk to the mushroom coat lady. What if this is a permanent effect? Probably not. Well, actually, hold on. Where's my dog at? Let's see if it works with him. All right. Hello. So, have you managed to leave our message to Comrade Pavliuk? That's, that's why I'm here for, or what I'm here for. <coughs> Excuse me. Go on, I'm listening. Pig's dead, notes read. Alright. Woman claps her hands in sheer delight. You're a real hero. Sad that we had to stoop so low and make someone an assassinated animal. But Vadim Nikodimovit. Nikodimovit. No, I'm saying it wrong. Nikodimich. Did not get, leave us any choice in the matter. 
Now when the deed is done, he will sure think over his policy again. Well, happy to serve the Unity. Now what should we do next? Silently look at your watch and then at Ariana. Yeah. We had a long think and decided that some traitorous spy would never work so hard for our cause. You actually risk life and limb. Great. Glad you believe me. This is why we have decided to offer you more missions. Of a rather serious nature. The woman looks at you... Looks at you... I'm sorry. The woman looks at you lost deep in thought for a moment and then... And then gets really serious. Why can't I... I can't focus on words. Jeez. Organization is gathering all sorts of artifacts all over the waste. Just like that sad little Adam society. Unlike them, we do not hide away. Plus, our goal is much more transparent. We are saving humanity. Some time ago, with the help of our secret channels, we got a really interesting object from a secret bunker. Bunker 317. I doubt you know about it. Listen in silence. So after we got the artifact, we sent two of our own expeditions to the, to the other secret bunkers. These were supposed to be simple missions, but when a certain amount of time passed and our people did not return, we started to worry. Nod and cross your arms on your chest. Now we need someone who can follow in their footsteps and find out why they haven't returned. Yes, this will make us lose all semblance of secrecy, but it's a risk we are willing to take. The result of the operation these men tried to accomplish is marked by golden mushroom on, in our documents. Which means if something goes wrong, humanity as a whole may be in danger. That's a huge deal. Uh, what, were, what were they looking for in those bunkers? I do, I do not know. You should not ask people such questions. Just find out what happened to the expeditions. I understand. Now I need these bunker locations. Ariana nods and asks for your map. These two bunkers are far away from Krasno, further even than Paragon. Two weeks of travel minimum. One is in the mountain pass of Woes. Trade caravans ride through that place. These caravans usually stop in the Fogolevka village to the west of Krasno. You should chase a ride there. Okay. It's dangerous to come on foot, as the mountains there are hard, are hard to hike through and very dangerous. The other bunker is located in the dead city. It was once a giant of industry. A mere husk now, resting to the southeast from us. It got bombed in the war, but people still live there, as far as I know. Life must be very tough out there. In the port of Krasno, you may find a ship captain willing to take you there. This is all that I'm allowed to tell you. Where exactly the two bunkers are, this must be found out when you're on location. Well, let's just say that finding lost expeditions is my special talent. Great, I hope to see you back soon. Victorious, or hear about your demise. Yep, that's how it always works. Or always is. Okay, cool. So we can go to Fogolevka now. Uh, let's go back to Red Fighter real quick and get that last upgrade. And then... Um... Maybe we'll do the Dead City first since we're here. Alright, we're near Krasno. And then we can save Fogolevka for last. But sounds like, uh... Fogolevka and the Mountain Pass of Woes are both, like, separate locations. Like, we have to fast travel there. Let's check out the armor shop real quick. See if he has anything for us. So we're sitting pretty good money-wise, so it's it's good to spend it every now and then. And I have things to sell. Guess there's nothing better. Alright, well give me give me your money. Alright. Red Fighter upgrade, then we'll come back here, we'll go to the dead city. Or we could go to Fokalevka and do those quests instead. I know. Got a couple choices. Okay, a little careful with my fuel. I don't have a lot left. Oh, hold on, let's go down here and see about the uh, guy on the workbench. See if he has any ammunition for us. I 
The man is leaning on the machine. In his eyes, there's a mischievous twinkle of a mad scientist. When he sees you, the man smiles and raises his hand in salutation. So, so, what type of bullets do you want? Uh, walk me through the options. Okay, let's start with the type. Do you need pistol rounds, shotgun, and hunting, ri and hunting rifle rounds? Or maybe rounds for the automatic weaponry? Pick your favorite. Shotgun and hunting rifle rounds. I hear you. Okay. Do you need me to make 12 gauge rounds with pellets or a slug? Or maybe the good old 7.62x54? Uh, 7.62x54. Interesting. Well, to make 10 rounds, I'll need 4 piles of scrap metal, 4 heaps of waste paper, and not one, and not one, not two, but four handfuls of gunpowder. Okay, I don't have any of that. Uh, let's ask him some questions, because I don't have his name yet. Uh, who are you? My name, I am Nikolai, Master Cartridge Maker at your service. Okay, uh, how did you get here? Oh, by the back roads, slippery slopes and wrong paths. Life in the waste took a great toll on me. She tortured me plenty. Only now I'm getting my life together. Seen anything of interest? Never seen, but heard. They say there's a skinworm critter somewhere in the waste. The bugger crawls up your bumhole. Okay, I've already read that, I think. Alright, so I have to give him stuff to make ammo. Well, that's disappointing. Unless somebody would just make ammo for me somehow. I didn't want to have to earn it. I just wanted it. Alright, let's get the last upgrade going. Uh, without a bedroom and a bathroom, things could get awkward. Let's fix these areas up. I agree. It's good to have a place you can wash your hands at. Come back in three days, Chief. I'm a great handyman, but fixing pipes ain't a walk in the park. You pass the money to the technician. Upon smoking a ciggy, he lowers himself into the bunker. The lid closes shut behind him. Uh, that should be the last upgrade for the bunker. Now I guess we're going to the dead city? I am taking the diesel with me because... I know that you need diesel for the dead city. There's another spoiler that I found on the internet. Alexander, come here. Carry the rest of the stuff. I should probably just carry all of it so I keep it all in one spot. I don't know why I'm splitting it up like that. This is stupid. There you go, buddy. Actually, I might go to Fogolevka first. I want to travel off the, the main map until, uh, until we have to. So yeah, let's go to Fogolevka. Which is down here somewhere. Oh. All the way over here. I right, might run out of gas before we get there. I feel like I'm pushing it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, do you guys have gas? That would be great. No, of course you don't. All right. Yeah, all lights blinking now. Hopefully, someone here sells gas. Okay, so it drops us off in the middle of town. Let's uh. Start off at like one side and then work our way in. Like, can I get up here and talk to this guy? What is he all about? Hey, bud. A muscular village guard meets you with a raised brow and a smile. Seems like you're like you interested him, but not so much that he would stop his job for you. Ah, new face here in Polkalevka. Tell me, what do you want? Actually, where's this woman going? Why is she leaving town? Come back. I'm gonna catch her before she leaves. Oh, okay, so she leaves during the day. That's interesting. Okay. But good to know. Alright, let's talk to this guy. Uh, tell me about this village. 
It's a boring place, but someone needs to guard it. Plus, sometimes it even becomes filled with action. I think my place is on the front lines, but it's good to take a breather uh, now and then. Uh, I want to ask you for some advice? Ho, oh, I'll tell you this. Many people think only for themselves and don't give a rat's butt about their companions. That's very wrong. Even if you're okay, your friends might be hurt or hungry. Stop and chat with them. Fix them up if you have to. Uh, maybe you know some rumors? Heard about Bunker 317? Don't know where it's at, but my grandpa helped build it. He always said there were secret doors installed there. Why they... Why were they made is another question. Secret doors. Interesting. Alright, let's go talk to this guy. Let's do our normal rounds around the village, talk to everybody, get whatever quests we can. The young guard looks at you with a calculating glance and laughs. Young. He looks older than most of the people I've talked to in the game. Seems like despite seeing the dangers of the world, he's okay with meeting them face to face still. Hey there. So you want something? Uh, tell me about this village. Nice place, huh? People are sweet, just like in Ochinoye, but they don't die from hunger like there. More places like this, now that would have been awesome. Maybe you can give me some advice. My men ask for those all the time as well. They look like an experienced guy, so here's what I'll tell you. The worst thing about drug and alcohol abuse is when you get the withdrawal pains, but it's better to suffer through them than continuing the cycle. Uh, know any rumors? Apart from slavers, weird cultists roam the eastern plains. Some like to sacrifice people to their hungry gods and throw their heads into a pool of chemicals in their temple. Kiss your loved, one, loved ones goodbye before visiting the eastern part of the wastes. Okay. Well, good to know, I suppose. Something to keep an eye on. Or an eye out for. Okay, found some soap. Well, this area is actually pretty big. Um, hmm, right, let's talk to her since we're over here. A slender girl who looks about 18 smiles to Burley and looks aside when you notice her. As soon as she starts a conversation herself. My father will so lose his temper when he sees us together again. This is why we absolutely must have a chat. You can ask me anything. Uh, what is it about your father? I didn't quite get it. What about him? The only thing he's worried about is that I run away or, I don't know, become a street girl. When all I really want, to, want is to study. I don't think about guys at all. Well, almost. Now that he seems, now that he's seen this crazy dream, he never lets, lets eyes off me at all. It's so awkward, like a stone on my neck. I wish someone could talk to him. Oh, wonderful method of bringing up a child. A strong hand is what they need. I allowed my child to do anything he wants. Be it kill or cheat or lie to his father as if he were a, a bat mule. Take his booze away from him. I would never do that, even if I could. Honestly. Why indeed not talk to him about it? Wait here. I'll go now. Actually, can I ask you questions? Questions. Uh, what's your name? I am Preslava Garku Garkushina. It's an ancient Slavic name, just like my father's. He's Dushan, which derives from the old word that means soul. My name means I'll become famous when I grow up, or something like that. Uh, what are you busy with? I study and clean the house. This is all I'm allowed to do for now. Uh, what would you say about the village? It's quite boring, although the soldiers sent from Krasno make life a bit more tolerable. Pity Father gives me side looks when I talk to them. Uh, can you tell me any fresh rumors? I'm not told much. Well, I think about the only thing I've... I think about the only thing I've heard is about this potion that enables you to walk to talk to animals. Some, some herb healer... Jeez, I can't read. Some herbular healer either already invented it or is going to. I'd be scared to drink anything like it. We're so cruel to animals. We eat them, skin them to make clothes. What can they say? Just swear at us? Alright. Well, that was a struggle to read. Is this the father? He's nearby, so... 
A tall villager with lively blue eyes looks at you grudgingly, his arms akimbo, his legs wide apart. When you come closer, he crosses his arms on his chest and announces, This is right. Want to talk? Go talk to me. There's no need to circle around my daughter like a vulture. I was just going to talk to you. Mind a couple questions? Well, ask what you need. Who are you anyway? I'm Dushan. Dushan Garkishin. I'm a farmer. Nice to meet you, Dushan. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? What can I tell you about Fokalevka? It's a nice and quiet place. If someone makes trouble, it's visitors, not the villagers. Sounds like paradise. He looks like Michael McDonald. <laughs> what do you do to earn your daily bread? I don't earn it. I grow it on this very land. Uh, care to share some rumors? The young have it hard now. No cultural institutions or pioneers camps. And there's this new drug now, the Black Lotus. If you live, you'll be addicted to it until the end of your days, which is worse, which is worse than death. Uh, talking about your daughter, what do you, what do you keep pestering her for? Why are you so worried about your daughter? Nothing. Um, what else do you want? Uh, talking about your daughter, what do you keep pestering her for? The man looks around. Pestering? What are you talking about? Okay, listen. A week ago I had this dream, as if a bear and a she-bear came out of the forest. And Preslava, my daughter, brought them water to drink. When they quenched their thirst, she climbed on one of the bear's back, and the three of them left Fogolevka. You don't have to be smart to see what it meant. The bear stands for a man who will ruin my stupid girl. The she-bear is an evil woman who will teach her bad things. My girl could do without such guests. She's too young for this. That's why I'm keeping her away from the new people in the village, be it man or woman. I pray to God to make this dream come true, for the girl will be much happier even out there in the forest than here with a father who doesn't believe religion and dreams to be mere vestiges of the dark past. I'll hit you if you do. I'll hit you if you do, old man. Wake up, man. We live in the time of progress. A man traveled in space, the world was shattered with nuclear bombs, and he still believed dreams? The man muses for a few minutes. He seems a, he seems a battleground of two contradictory forces, and at last his best judgment wins. He nods silently. A uh, sullenly. Sorry. True that. Of course it is. I can't spoil the girl's life simply because I had a bad dream. Wonderful decision. It might be and it might not. Time will tell. Fair enough. Alright, let's go tell her the good news. Uh-oh. Maybe she already heard the good news. And she left. She's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Oh, there she is. How did she get past me? Also, I don't think she's wearing shoes. Uh, talking about your father. What about it? Rejoice, for I have made him see reason. Now your life will get easier. The girl blushes and smiles widely. Have you? Thank you so much. I don't really know what to say. It was so hard for me, being under his total control. Now it'll definitely be better, thanks to you. Here, I've been working in the garden, and look what I found. The girl looks around surreptitiously, and takes a very real hand grenade out of her pocket. <laughs> the remnant the remnant of the war. You'll put it to good use, I'm sure. Or sell it. Why not? Holy crap. Give it to us, to save you from harm. Quiet. God forbid Father hears us talking. Uh, thanks a lot. See you later. Okay, well, she gave us a grenade. Not the reward I was expecting, but I'll gladly take it. Oh, there's two different containers right here. Eh, yeah, there's nothing on it, in it though. Oh, let's talk to this lady. <coughs> oh, excuse me. A tidy woman in her 40s is bustling around with some household chores, which is why it takes her some time to notice you. When eventually she does, she nods friendly at you. I'm sorry, I haven't noticed you. Too busy thinking to, co too busy thinking to concentrate. What do you want, traveler? Uh, let's ask some questions first. I'll do my best to help. Uh, what is your name? I am Stepanita. Stepanita Gargish, Gargish, <laughs> son of son of a gun. Gargishina, Dushin's wife, Preslava's mother. Nice to meet you, Stepan Stepanita. Uh, what are you busy with? Around the house to keep my husband and daughter from killing each other. First he has a bad dream about her, then he suspects she's in love with a shaman from the tavern, or imagines her breath reeks of alcohol. He's afraid of letting her grow up. Yet this is inevitable. 
Uh, what can you say about Fogolefka? Same as about my old shoes. Might not look like much, but they're the most comfortable shoes ever, and I'm used to them. It's boring here, but still much better than in the north, with some of their tyrants like Sema Veronic. You might be right. Have you heard any good rumors lately? Rumors, gossip, all passes me by. Astrology is what I'm much more interested in. People say that, Hes that Hespera's star is in fact Venus. But how can it be? Before the war, Venus was a tiny dot in the sky, not brighter than any faraway star. And now one night a year, this so-called Venus shines so brightly you can read with this light. Is this indeed Venus? This is elementary, senorita. Before the war, people used a lot of electricity. The sky reflected this light, which made that star seem dull. This is also known as light pollution, and now we see things as bright as they should be. Well, I don't know. Even taking all this into account, a spare star is too bright. Alright, uh, what are these thoughts that bother you? Well, chickens don't lay as many eggs ever since Hesperus star rose above. I didn't drive them to the shed on time, so they enjoyed the night view, so to speak. My husband and daughter are always at each other's throats, like cat and a dog. Okay, so... Helped out with one of those problems. Alright, I'm gonna do everything on this side of the village first. Some more guards. Alright, let's go into this house. How long have I been recording? Actually, you know what? I might call the episode here. The next episode will finish up Folkalevka. Because it's it's not that big. It's maybe like Ultra Noye size. So we can talk to everyone next episode, get all the quests, and then uh, we'll start knocking out those quests. Oh, he's a merchant. Anyway, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, and hope to see y'all in the next episode.